How's it going, everyone? Um, I'm Max. I'm one of the founders of Volley, and we make games for voice platforms, mostly focused on Alexa and Google Home right now. And we think voice is a pretty awesome gaming platform. I think Marcel has talked about this a little bit, but there are a few things I really sort of want to hammer home what makes this special. One is it's always on. Literally, you can summon one of our games by saying, Alexa, play song quiz, or Alexa, play yes, sire, and it gets going in two seconds. You know, An app maybe takes 10, 20 seconds to get started, a console or a VR headset much, much longer. Um, the second thing we found that's super important and that I think can apply to things beyond games is it's multiplayer. Um, we find for our top games, people like to sit in a room and play together at once, whether it's a family sitting around a dinner table, um, drunk people at a party on a weekend. Uh, I've personally participated in some of those games. Um, and I think that that's sort of an underrated aspect of voice, that it can be a live social experience in a way that almost no other platform can be. Uh, and finally, kind of the alternate point is you can do the dishes while you're playing. Um, we find for some of our storytelling games, people are doing the dishes, they're doing laundry, they're making dinner, while in the background there's sort of a story that they're taking part in, uh, you know, as a part of their sort of entertainment. It sort of fills that place that television as like a passive entertainment medium did for a lot of people uh, in the last 50 years or so. Um, and luckily, the big man himself, Jeff Bezos, agrees. He thinks that games are the killer app for Alexa. And so we have the uh, number one overall Alexa game. Uh, it's called Song Quiz. It has over 9,000 reviews, and we're trying to get to 10,000 soon. We also have seven of the top 20 reviewed Alexa games. Um, and we have a 4.9 star average rating, which we're very proud of, uh, with something like 15,000 reviews now. So I'm going to talk you through a little bit of the tricks of the trade of, of getting discovered on Alexa, because I think that's something that, uh, at least so far, we've excelled at. Um, number one, we have this sort of ecosystem approach. We have a number of different titles in sort of three major categories. Uh, the top one is music games, where we play little five-second clips of songs and you name the title or the artist. That was something I mentioned earlier, works really well as a live multiplayer social experience where you can do it with your family or your friends all together. And then we've spun off of that a uh, holiday version and a, a country song quiz version we just launched about two weeks ago and is doing well so far. Uh, that was actually our most requested genre, which probably tells you something about the demographics of people who play games on Alexa. Um, second category, interactive stories. Uh, this is our number two most popular game, Yes, Sire. It's basically a medieval choose-your-own-adventure story where we play little 20, 30-second clips of story. You participate. Um, it's narrated by a synthesized British voice, which we think makes it more entertaining and immersive. And to speak to Marcellus's point about personas, that's super important. Um, and then finally, contests and trivia. I think you guys probably all know that Jeopardy is really popular. We have a number of popular sort of trivia style games. One that I'd like to point out for the more commerce-oriented people in the crowd that's been doing really well recently is Price It Right. It's basically a price naming game where we tell you about, say, like a 10-pound bag of gummy bears from Amazon, and you try to guess how much it costs. And people play that against each other for incredible periods of time. So if anyone <laughs> wants to talk to me about marketing some sort of product in Price It Right, I'd love to chat. Um, yeah, so discovery. Quick tricks of the trade, getting your skills or voice apps discovered, and feel free to ask me afterwards because I can give you more, more detail and more secrets. Uh, number one is writing, number two is reviews, and number three is social. Um, the first one, writing, and this is super obvious, and I'm sure a lot of you guys really care about the quality of your copy and your storytelling and everything, but if you want people to play for long periods of time or really be immersed in your you know, app in general for long periods of time, uh, the writing quality really needs to be top caliber. I think that this is a problem with like 98% of voice apps. Um, the, the writing's just bad. Um, and I think Marcellus earlier again spoke to really long blocks of text that aren't immersive or entertaining is, is bad news. Uh, the second one is reviews. Super obvious, but getting reviews helps you get noticed. Social proof is super important. If people write reviews for your, your apps or games, you'll move up in the rankings, more people will play, you'll get more reviews, the flywheel will continue, and, and you'll rise in the store and get more and more users. Um, one super secret way to get reviews is to ask your users to leave you reviews. Um, it works incredibly well for us. We convert multiple single-digit percentages of people to actually writing a review in the Amazon store, which takes like 12 minutes if you've ever tried it, so it's kind of amazing that it works at all. If you have a good product and you ask people to give you reviews and you offer them something in return, they'll probably do it. And so if you want users, you, you definitely should do this. Um, the last one is social. 
I talked about this. Uh, look, building a game or any sort of piece of voice experience that people can play together at once is a good idea. People remember those kind of things. Positive social experiences <laughs> drive immersion and retention. Um, and not just the live multiplayer experience, but we find that allowing people to play one-on-one -on -one against people around the country you know, matching them up, letting them sort of visualize the, the person in Dallas they're playing against, even if it's not in real time, uh, works really well. So those are kind of my hacks, but I'm happy to elaborate on them later if anyone wants to talk. Uh, I believe that is it. Thanks very much. Oh, yeah. I guess one question, if anyone has a question. We've got time for one question. Max. Max Child. That one doesn't count as a question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, bye, everyone. Uh, that was easy. Hey, Max. Hey. Uh, quick question. How did you um, get more users at the beginning? What was the biggest challenge? Um, I mean, I sort of tried to address that on the slide, but we started with Yes, Sire, um, which was a medieval choose your own adventure game. And we had 10,000 words of story in there that I can say having not written them that I thought were pretty entertaining and engaging. And so you could play that game for like an hour and a half and two hours and have basically no repeat of story. And there's also a mechanic in which you're constantly trying to beat your last score. So there's a little bit of an arcade game element. So we have people who have played Yes Sire for something like 50 hours in the last 90 days. Um, and there's only two hours of story. So <laughs> if you build enough content, I think people will get immersed. And if they get immersed at the end, as I said, ask for a review and say, if you leave us a review, we'll add more content, which is not like specifically true, but generally it is true that if they leave reviews and our company is successful, we will be adding more content. So have a little bit of a quid pro quo there, and it works pretty well. And that was kind of how we got discovered, yeah. Thanks.